down here on the south coast of Cornwall. It's in the UK. I'm going to be going out. I'm going to try and catch, if I can, a shark or two. Two would be nice. One will salvage the day. It's very early in the morning. I'm coming out of the Marina Stroke Creek area, Estuary, Estuary, I suppose we're going to call this one. And it is a beautiful setting down here when you get it right, but I don't know what the wind's going to do. There's other yachts and stuff out I can see in the distance. I think we're okay. There's a big fog bank out over here in there. I think it's going to burn off. And you can see yachts, 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 as far as you can go. Famous yachting area. And I've got a bit of company with me today. It's not Mabel, it's not Smith. I'll tell you who it is, it's a new character, fishing with a totally awesome fishing show. Let's get the hammer down and get out there. So this is a guy that's uh, coming to fish with us today. Oh no, it's not Daddy Longless. It's this guy. This is Ted. Ted, say hello to the people on YouTube. Hello everybody. My name's Ted. Oh, I think he is anyway. Oh, I was born in London. I was, I was drinking in somewhere else, probably China. That's where I kept on the Chinese, Teddy. Well, Ted's on his, uh, on his first fishing trip. I have put over the chum as you can see it is absolutely rank it is rotten thawed out rotten it reeks it is the worst one i've probably put out for about 10 years it's slicked the surface off quite a long way offshore you can see the land maybe in the background i'm going to put some shark lines out and then i'll probably sit down and have some breakfast it is pumping out at the moment so this is going to go quickly but hopefully it will land lay itself as a nice trail to start with and then I can put the other boxes which I've got are frozen. This one is not and it's pouring out. They're certainly going to know I'm here. I know you're here, I can smell it. Okay, bait was kindly donated by a man who met me last night at the boatyard. He'd been out mackerel fishing and he gave me half a dozen nice chunky mackerel to start with. So I don't have to worry too much about catching fresh bait. I've got six and I've got some other rubbish baits in there as well. It's blue shark fishing, generally you find they eat pretty much everything, garfish, whiting, mackerel, pretty much whatever you put in the water. So there's my mackerel, not the world's greatest hook. It's a big steel trace there, so people know, let's say about four or five feet long, about, I think it's about six, seven hundred pounds. Swivel, a load of strimmer line, and this one is unfortunately my thresher shark trace, so it's doubled up, it's enormous. So I'm only going to nip it, literally, about... 50 feet deep because I find generally blue sharks do come in shallow. Can you see that, Ted? Is it a touch screen? Yeah. It don't work. We're drifting offshore, so I'll keep an eye on that. I fished out here before where it says wreck drift. So we just see where that drift takes us. If it goes too far out, I have to motor back in again. I don't want to be fishing off the coast of New York. I put my float on this, which I invented. It's invented by a totally awesome fishing show. I bound a sailfish release clip there, which you pinch a line into and you can adjust the tension with that screw there. And it just does this. You've probably seen it on our shark films. When you strike or tighten up on a fish, it goes pop and then slides back down. So that's what I'm using. I'm putting the deepest bait I'm putting my deepest bait the farthest back. You never know when a shark's going to come. It might not come at all. 
it might come at the very end of the day it might grab a bait that you're winding in to pack up and I have had them putting a bait back like this without even having any chum in the water at all you just never know with shark fishing what they do the guys inshore have told me it's not great fishing apparently there's a color bloom in the water and that uh, if you can find clean water you catch fish if you don't there's nothing it's absolutely dead it's like an I think it's like an owl bloom one of them said they had a, quite a big may bloom which is a may weed sort of rock and it was a very very large um, area it covered and boats have been traveling all over but I've come out beyond the headlands over there and over there and you can see I'm in what I call the main ocean because I've got the swell here going through so I could have stayed inshore a couple of miles I wouldn't have got this little bit of swell but I feel that might be perhaps cleaner ocean coming through there listen that's all I think about is, is, is you know trying to come up with these theories as to where I should be fishing so I'm going to run this one way, way back there far probably 50 60 yards it's out the way and the blue shark baits I put very very close to the boat and then I have my breakfast when you get it set back to the required distance put the reel on strike check how tight you want that drag there what a morning at the moment well it's a bit bizarre people I've got one two three shark lines out because I am fishing solo I am alone I've got to be careful I've got a bottom rod which I'm getting hammered with I guess it's whiting there so I've got to leave them hanging on the bottom on mackerel strips on baited feathers and a huge fish just boshed up here Whoosh! now I don't know whether that was a giant tuna or whether it was a dolphin because generally a dolphin or a porpoise you hear you hear the blow I didn't hear the blow but I also didn't see anything else at all it was quite scary it's really close 30 feet away it was a big fish whatever it was I want to tell myself that it's actually a dolphin or a porpoise because that's scary to have a big fish that close to you so brekkie time you don't want breakfast Ted don't be stupid how can I have breakfast I've got a mouth haven't I? I've got a mouth I can't chew anything <laughs> So luckily, somewhere, a spoon that isn't filthy, buried in here. I believe I've got two breakfasts. Well, you wouldn't believe that looking at all this food, but oh, oh dear! Don't let Ted see these. So I'm only going to barely get two days out of the milk. That's the thing. In that cooler, so. I don't need a shark one at the moment. I need 10 minutes of peace. I just need to get something down my neck. You know when you've absolutely... I was going to bring all tea making stuff. I can't be bothered. I really can't be bothered. This is, this is basically survival at sea, this is. No tea. For an Englishman, that's survival at sea. Right. I'll try and keep that chilled. Hopefully, I've got enough food to see me through about... 12 hour sesh. And then I've got enough, I've split it. Got some fruit here as well. Gonna keep that cool. Wife looks after me, well you've got to admit, haven't you? She puts up with a hell of a lot. I'll make the most of it when she wants to go and have her hair done, nails done, whatever, pedicures, manicures. I'll make the most of it. I do cash in on that, don't you worry. What I wonder about is, if, if I've got to talk quietly, if Ted up there can't eat, how did he get to that size? He must have eaten something, but he's got no mouth. How did he get to that size? Was he born that size? Maybe all Ted's are born that size, and they just, they don't get any bigger. Mmm, human food. Cornflakes and raisins. It makes getting up at 5.15 in the morning worth it. What are you looking at in there? Can't help it if I haven't got a mouth. Got a foot though, it's a kicking foot. Take that. Alright? You want a piece of me? 
Well, I've seen the culprit boys there. Just down there, you might be able to see them through the water. A load of dolphins. Wow, look at that, right through the chum stick. He looks like he's being sick, it's the smell of the chum. You won't want to go in there, he's going to come up again, look. I've never seen them come up, it's like they're fighting for air there, it's weird. They look like Pacific white-sided dolphins. That's what they look like to me and there should be yellowfin tuna amongst them. But I am the other side of the globe. There's a lot of them out there. 50, 60, so that was obviously what I heard was the swirl behind my boat, which makes me feel sort of better that it wasn't a monstrous shark. There they go, right through the slick, full of stinking fish oil. Wow. They must love that. Well, brekkie's over. Nothing. I haven't wound up this bottom rod yet to see what's on the bottom there. Probably whiting, or maybe I've lost the fish. But look, here's my office for the day. I'm about... Let's call it 10 miles, I'm drifting even further, but call it 8 miles, 8 miles out, office for the day. Isn't it nice to have it absolutely vacant except, except, I am in nobody's backyard here, I'm all on my own, but no bearing down on me is Mr Yachtsman. Plum on, plum on for smashing into me. I don't know why they do it, why do they do it? Look at the ocean here. What bothers me is that there's nobody on watch. They've gone down to have a G&T or, or whatever they do, volivants, I don't know. Why do they, he's, he's auto course about three times. I'm not even sure there's anybody on, is it on autopilot? I don't know. It kind of, it, it's kind of worrying guys. It really is quite kind of worrying. I'm sure a lot of you small boat anglers know exactly where I'm coming from. Is, you know, we're out there, we're fishing, we're on the ball most of the time anyway. But you know, I just, I just worries me. Look, he's, he's plumb on, he's absolutely, online for me. Now if he's not on duty, what do I do? I can't call him up because I don't know his name of his boat. I'd have to say vessel bearing down on da 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 da, get my glasses, get my you know, bearing, he's moved again. <laughs> I know there's not much wind for to steer by but they've got an engine on those big yachts. I'm hoping he's going to see me. What bothers me is sometimes I'm always worried they can't see through that sail and you're in the front and they go da 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 bang, I'm done. We'll see where he comes. Oh, he's gone back onto dead. He's dead on, he's dead on again. He likes to live dangerously. Ted, I've got some fish here, mate. Do you want to wind it up? Wind it up? I don't know about that. I'm more worried about that. Yachtsman, he's coming straight for us. Oi! Punch you! Punch you! Run at me! Shoot at me! Awful! Shoot! Awful! Listen, just mind your language. This is a family show. I should, I should communicate in English with him. Well, it might help. Oi! Oi! Stop that language! Well, I tell you what, though, I reckon he understood it. He's all a cost. You want a kicking foot, mate? You'll get it. You'll get one of these, have you? You French, wouldn't you? Suppose he's not French. He's still coming straight for us. I'm going to wind this fish up now. You can do it. You can do this. Are you sure I can do it? It's a big one. What's that? What's that? That's the reel. Turn the handle. I've only got a little pause. Get hold of it. Don't be a wimp. No bloody wimp. No wimp or teddy bear. You ever seen a teddy bear wind a fishing reel? Don't wind it through the rings. Help! Help! Ted? What? Don't say what, say pardon. Pardon? What? Just pull this in, I'll give you the line. What's that silver thing there? That's a hook. Don't get that in you. It's not a thing, it's a whiting. It's a whiting.
the sword, as you can see. He's got big eyes and all that, and he can eat because he's got a mouth. Let's bang him on the head. No, don't bang him on the head like that. Don't worry, he's dead. Whatever for tea. Well, I won't because I've got no mouth. But you can. Ted, do you want to actually pose up and get a picture of this? Because it could be good. It could go in the angling press. You know, they print fish. It's big. It's definitely big. Well done, Ted. Well done, mate. That is a big whiting, Ted. Well done. That's your first fish. What else do you get? Sharks. Sharks? F*** that. I'm off. Well, Ted had a nice white in there. I'm actually going to try for some mackerel, but the guy um, in shore I was talking to said the sandals are tiny, tiny sandals this year. That they cut open the mackerel and they're tiny sandals inside them and they're very, very thin. So maybe there's a lack of food in the ocean. So the guy gave me this pouch of stuff, said you might as well use it. Grandma, I'm never going to use it. And thank you very much. I will be using, not selling them, Sabiki. Well, oh, that's the mate, we won't give them a plug. Sabiki feathers, because Sabiki's are quite a small feather. Look, there's one, two, three, there's about eight on there. This should be fun getting it off the packet. But what I do like are these little beads. They're like a luminous bead, so maybe, maybe, if we get this untangled by next week, I could drop it down and we might pick some fresh mackerel up. And then I've got extra baits and or Ted can even wind one in, I should think. It's going to be great fun with him with six feathers. There's eight here. These sabikis are very good. So I'm using these because that guy told me that this year appears, they're called bullseye rig. It means nothing to me. I don't like them too long, but we'll give it a go because the object of the exercise is catching fish. And you can see there, they're very, very small. It appears the sharks are not at home at the moment. Our friend the Yossman has missed us by about 40 feet. I just hope he has a bon voyage somewhere else. I've got my whiting rod back down again. Oh, that's a quality one. No wonder that guy gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> it snapped by just pulling it tight. Keep all your rubbish inside the boat, guys. Far easier it would have been to just tie a loop in here like this. Just using a small four ounce lead. Goodness me, these links wheels are pretty rubbish, but we'll see. I won't be saying it's rubbish if I catch some fish. Over we go. Now, the reason I'm only using four ounces is because I'm not going to the bottom. I already have one on the bottom with some bait on and nothing's eating it. Let's drop that down a bit further. It's on the bottom. So what you can do is just leave them about 20, 30 feet down and sometimes you'll get mackerel coming in the chum slick. It appears not today. Anything in the chum slick. And they must know us, us is there. Oh, there's a bite on that, on that one there. I'm going to drop this down. I should drop it down on the other side. Oh, there's a bite. Crank it up. And then I'm going to drop it down again, see if I can't hook two at the same time. Very often you get the mackerel on the way down. It's sort of rare, unless they're very thick, to get them on the way up. Now, I always find that they, they tend to uh, take on the way down. And hold the lead. Don't ever grab handfuls of feathers moving around on a boat. Just hold the lead, keep everything nice and tight like that. Release the lead, out he goes. Feathers are outside the boat and that's the safest place for them. You can also put a little tip of bait on there if you wanted. So I'm going to leave that there just to move with the action of the boat. The water clarity, to be honest, they said it's not good, look. Yeah, it looks clear to me. It looks really, really clear to me. I'm amazed. I've got no garfish, no mackerel, and no sharks, nothing. Just whiting, and even there occasional, just on the bottom. So, more whiting on the way. This one, ah, oh, it's not, in fact, it's a scad. 
Now Scad are a very good live bait. I wound that all the way up and he's still alive. Scad is a horse mackerel. Big mouth and they're very, very tough. They don't seem to suffer from the bends. And for good luck, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him go. Ted, do you wanna put this one back? Yeah, I'll put it back because I'll play a bit of rugby. It's a lot of nice badge here, if you can see. Oh, lovely. Off you go. That's a bit harsh, wasn't it? Oh, he's in the water, isn't he? What's the problem he lives there? I call that a conversion. Well, as a general rule, I only catch fish on the bottom one, but I've had three on here, one's just fallen off, and here comes another two, chunky whited. Not as big as that first one old Ted had, but what I find is generally, I don't bother baiting the top hook here. I bait the bottom three hooks, and that was the hook, that other one over there, we'll swim away in a minute, if not, we'll get eaten by a seagull. The bottom three hooks are the ones that normally catch. The top one doesn't really get it, because it's, your lead's bumping along like this on the bottom at an angle, so unless you have it flat, put the lead up here on a running ledger, there's no point in using it. But some nice whiting there and up here is Mr. Blackback Gull who got eyes like you wouldn't believe and he spotted that whiting. Pretty sure he's going to take a swing at that and pick it up. Second herring gull is going to have a go at that. Whiting third one is going to have a go. And Blackback better pick it up quick if he wants it. Here he comes, there he goes. Boom. <laughs> Picked that whole whiting up on the wing. That was pretty cool. You won't need to eat for a week. Boys, I dropped that down. I said I would not have dropped the feathers down to the bottom and had two mackerel. And here is a Gurnard. I always get my Gurnard mixed up. Tub Street, grey, reds. There's going to be Gurnard experts out there somewhere. These apparently, let me untangle him. These apparently are very good eating, not this size obviously. It looks like a horror story, but in fact it's quite a pretty little fish. And he goes along the bottom with all these fins, digging up whatever he digs up. But you can get tub gurnards, red gurnards, get some really big ones. This is not a big one. It's not a big one, but quite a pretty fish, as you can see there. And he should go back okay. There he goes, he's going down. For some reason, they don't get the bends like uh, white do. They've got a different swim bladder system, I think. Back down we go. Still no sharks. A bit peculiar, a bit worrying. And I am going offshore, because there's the end of a peninsula over there and there's a big anchored ship and I'm going outside of that so I don't need the GPS and I can see I'm still going out I'm hoping the tide will turn and at least stop me going too far well jacket's come off I might have to put the lucky hat on and the lucky sunglasses very very quiet even to be honest I know I'm catching some whiting but even the whiting are quiet I don't understand it they did say it's what it was like the guys did say it's not fishing great because of this weed in the water or algae algal bloom in the water because you know you've driven s s nearly six hours towing a boat there's one thing you do want to do and that's put it in the water quite a few boats over there I don't know whether they're, they're tuna fishing you know the guys that go tuna fishing and tag them or whatever are you all right up there Ted I've been looking around I've been out here looking I do like a bit of peace and quiet I have been looking for boats, yachts, especially yachts, especially yachts. So especially now, I've, I've learned how to converse with them, that they understand my language. Don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say that word. Please don't tell them to off, will you? Well, I might, if they come close. Well, here's what not to do. Leave the rod unattended, not off to sleep. And you're hauling up big prime whiting. Whoops. Big prime whiting. All tangled up because I left the rod go slack. Still got the fish. That's the main thing that counts. 
Well, right, check these out, boys. This is a bit more like it. One, two, three. I haven't got them all in yet. That's right on the bottom. With those small hooks, just like the guys here. Two, three, four. I can hardly get them around. All big ones, too. Nice live bait there and food if you want them for cooking. Wow, this one's lassoed in the middle. Look. Let's get him in the cooler. Right. All right, there we go. We're going to see getting half a cooler for bait and food. What concerns me, I've had no sharks at all. I've had no mackerel in the top. I've seen no garfish, nothing, no activity in the top. Every single mackerel I've been getting has been right on the bottom. Hard on the bottom in 200 feet of water. Why is that? Is there no food in the upper layers? I just find that a bit strange. This is strange. How many times you can hook your bait towel with a set of mackerel feathers. Now I've got to freshen up my chum here just in case it's a turn of tide here. Let's give this a good old shake up. There we go. I think it's nearly ready for a top up. There's loads and loads of particles in there. I'm god smacked that after five hours I haven't even seen a shark. Have not even seen one. Wow. Right, well I finished that drift there. God, what was that? Nearly five and a half hours, no sharks, getting pushed closer to the shore. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to burn the fuel, come right back up here, further in the bay, but I've picked up some wind, and that's given me more of a square drift. It's still going to push me inshore. I can't get away from it. It's just one of those days. Short of, if I went out 10 miles, I would end up at 15 or 18, because that was the way the tide took me. Now I go out and I go out the same distance, I'm getting to push the other way inshore. You just can't win shark, you can't get the perfect shark drift. But I might have it now. I put my drogue out down here, which is like a sea anchor, and other people call it a sea anchor. And I'm going to give it a go, who knows, just going to put the three shark lines out. So many whitey on the bottom, I've actually stopped fishing for them. And I've just been trying to stock up on a few mackerel, which are patchy, but I've seen loads of these small porpoises, dolphins, whatever they are. Just nothing on the surface. A few birds, not really anything skittering and scattering about to get me excited. I think they see some bits and pieces inshore, but they, they get all wet and excited about <laughs> when they see five dolphins. Everybody's on the on the cliffs with binoculars. Oh my god, the dolphins there! Plenty of dolphins out here, must have seen about 60. And wasps and hornets. Ted's asleep, he's down in he's down, sorry, he's down in there. He's, he was feeling a bit queasy, so he's gone down. He didn't like that fast, fast drive when I had to move the boat, so he's having a bit of a lay down. I'll get these rods out. I'm actually, I'm getting uh, a little bit of oil left in there. I've got one tub of good stuff. I've got chum in here, doing me no good at all. But if you don't have chum ready mixed up, you can actually make your own. I do this, used to do this quite a bit in foreign countries with a fish called bonito or tuna. So I've got my fish here, which let's say these are going off in the sun, letting them soften. What I do is you just diamond cut them. I'll show you this. It's just like taking a fillet off, but you don't take the whole fillet off. You make like, you can make like a butterfly and just leave it like this, or you can turn over. Let's do both sides for you. Just imagine, basically, you're just cutting the meat off of the bone there. I might as well show you this in between because it might be helping somebody. Now, there, look, if you just diamond cut this loads of times, this little bits will break off it. We normally do it with tuna, but it works equally well with other fish that are going soft. Okay, let's do a few more of these. So some people just cut them here like this, but I don't. I tend to 
I like to cut the meat from the inside because the skin, otherwise the skin just holds it together. So just do a... Now these ones, I've got some in the uh, cool box. White and, and mackerel, I'll show you. All clean and fresh, big white in there. They've been gutted. These haven't, I've left the guts in them. So all you do is just diamond cut it. Don't go so hard that you actually go through the skin too much. And it just sort of hangs over the side like washing line. I've caught many fish like this doing this, especially in tropical countries. Diamond cutting fillets. It's just a way of making yourself some chum and the smell goes in the water. Right, then all you do is open the jaws. Don't forget fish like whiting do have teeth. You can use a piece of fishing line. In this case, I've got a piece of polypropylene and I'm going to tie them all together just like that so they hang like washing. So all threaded on I just do a sliding loop here just a knot there. Have you guys have seen that? Cinch it down. Actually I'm not going to put it in the chum side because there is chum you won't be able to see it. If I put it over this side just watch what comes off this one. There yeah, look at all that sparkling. Can you see loads and loads of chum and you can leave that hanging over the side. Of course, you've got to watch fish like blue shark don't come up and rip it off. But if you're if you're stuffed and you haven't got any chum or any bags or anything like that to put it in, or any chum buckets, you can do this and you can still shake them about like this. Look, look at all the fish that's coming off there. Lovely bits of flake, and of course, we use like 10 pound trout sometimes. Then all these loose parts, all you've got to do is just knock them. Look what I'm doing, look. Just scrape up and down that carcass there on the inside on the outside and look at all the bits that come off it so there you go it looks like a load of washing but it's in fact your chum bag I'm not going to waste it I'm going to put it in here a bit more smell in the water and that's a natural smell come on fair she's looking grim on the second drift Oily calm. He's got the other one as well, so we've got to wrap up here, boys. He's got both baits. Actually, I've got the other bait clear. I've got the other bait clear. We might be in with a chance. We might, might be in with a chance. Okay. I've got a mess. I've got a mess. Now, I'm just going to dance as it sounds, guys. Keep a bit of smell in the water. Right. We're going to try again, and I think there's every chance I've got to lose this fish if I've not already lost him. And yes, we've already lost him. Oh joy, what a day today has been. Well, there you go. Hopefully you saw the blue shark that was on. Unfortunately, it's just one of the worst days I've had shark fishing ever. Quarter to eight, it's now 20 past four, and the one shark I get just before I pack up I lose. Ted, would you like to uh, consider a few choice words? I hate fishing, I do. Guys, guys, there's a shark back. There's another shark come. I'm going to try and see if we can't get lucky with this one. I've just seen him. Just seen him come up down here. Going to put the head cam on eventually. He hasn't picked a bait up yet. Here he is. I'm going to see if you can see him. Look at this kid. Look at that shark there. Can you guys see him? He's not as big as that first one. Now, action stations. You need some smell in the water. And I intend giving it to him. This could be... Oh, right in the kiss of Graham. What is it with you today? I'm having an appalling day absolutely soaked in chum. 
Well, I tell you what, he can eat me if he doesn't want to eat the chum. See if I can see him again. Why is he not picking up this inside bait? Um, think, think, think. I'm going to have to... What have I got that I can chum? I'm going to chum up some bits and pieces of mackerel here. It might just... Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. He's over there. If I can just get him feeding on these little chunks like this, there's a chance he might pick a bait up. I've got one hanging just here. I better check the camera lens. Sure to be covered in yucky. He's coming in again, he's coming in again. I'm gonna pull the bait back. He must see it, why is he not eating? Oh God, I got the feathers out. Oh Lord. That's all I need. And braid. Gotta love it. Braid and feathers. And a shark. Come on, Mr. Shark, eat something. I've got a feeling he's gonna drop back and pick that one up. Oh, some little Joey mackerel. He can go back. They're probably gonna go straight down his throat. Something strange is happening, people. I've cleaned my glasses, so I should be able to see him. He's come up here again, but I'm also getting slow pulls on this one, which I don't understand. It's a real, a real sort of jaws. Tick, 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 like this. Now, I've been sat here for hours without it, so why? Why is that happening? My float's still up, I can see my float. I feel tension on the line. I don't know if it's a shark or whether it's weed. I've got to be perfectly honest with you. I'll be surprised if he's not cranked off with it yet being a shark. I think maybe it's weed. Could be something playing with it, could be a shark mouthing it. Strange, strange old game this fishing. Was that a mackerel wood? I don't need it out there. No, I don't feel anything on this one. Weed, I've got weed on this one. See a great big clump of weed. Brilliant, brilliant! That just finishes the day off. The shark's cleared off and the weeds come on. Lovely. Does it get any better than this? I'm gonna run out of chum in a minute, that's my worry. Shark's just gone under the boat, guys. Just gone under the boat. Is he gonna try and hand feed him? What is he after? Can you see him here? I think he's after his whiting. Look at that fish. Oh, there's a shot. There's the shot, people. Look at him checking us out. He's just checking us out. He does not want that mackerel at all. What is it he's after eating? I do not know. Here he comes. He just does not want that mackerel. There's something on the boat he wants that's electrical. I've had him. I've had them bite stuff before. Well, there he is, people. Even if I can't catch him, you've seen him. He does not want, I, I don't know what to try. I really don't know a fresh, I just put a fresh one on here. Thinking he must want, if he's still back chewing, he must want a fresh one. That is one KT shark. I'm putting this float just on the depth there of the trace. Really shallow, can you see now? No, he's right past it, he's just gone right past it. I can, I can hand feed him, look. Well, I can't, because he won't eat it. Hang on, hang on, he's picked the other line up. I can see the green line, he's got this one. He's picked up the shallow one, fingers crossed. Here we go, here we go. What is he still, he's still I can strike him by hand. Here he goes. Get on there, boy! Get your ass on there! Woo! You ain't the wrong one this time, Mama. Are we gonna get lucky? Ted, get the engine started. 
Wake up, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I hate shark fishing with braid, but I'll settle for anything at the moment. I think he was after those whiting. Oh, I pile it on. I don't want him rolling up. I've got quite a good trace here, but I've got a feeling they roll up. The way my luck's been going, he's going to roll up the trace and he'll go straight through that braid. He's swinging. Holy cow. I don't like that twanging business. Ah! Click her off. We don't have clicky noises. We know he's got a lot of line out. Not a lot, but enough. The other thing, I've not got my gloves ready, which I should have. Let's see if we can get him up for you first. If I can, I'd like to get Ted. Ted! Oh! I'm asleep! I'd like to get Ted to tag it for us. I don't want anything to do with that. Thanks, I had enough trouble with the writing. Uh, should have got the butt pad, Graham. I'd say today's about the most disorganised day I've had. That is the honest truth. Whew. I think the battery might go, or the memory card, or the line, or both. Or I drop the mic in the water. He's still pulling out, guys. Oh. I don't like the twangy. That's when they're rolling up. Needing to calm down. Whew. Come on, baby. Come on. I think it's that little bit of wind has narrowed down my chum slip. And looking back here, it's going right across the bay. Probably the last boat out here as usual. That's the way it is. And the last bit of chum. I'm pretty sure, guys, this one's wrapped. And that's why it's so hard to pull in. But what happens, they roll up, their body touches the main line and they go through it. I'm just hoping this trace is long enough. Just easing him up nice and steady. Look, if we lose it near the boat, I'm not really bothered because it's going to let go anyway. But it'd be nice to get it near the boat so at least you can see it. Ted is of no help whatsoever. He's sitting there like a stuffed toy. He's untangling now, he's untangling. I've got to lose some line again and he's going to take off. He's starting to untwist. I just knocked the drag off moving the camera and lost a load of line. He's coming up. He's going down. Maybe he's bigger than I thought he was. I thought he was about 30 pounds first off. 40 maybe, 30, 40 pounds. He may well be that, but he's not fighting like a 30, 40 pounder. Of course, he could have been eaten. There's an untangling and there's, there's the kicking, there's the kicking. I'm bending this rod. Head cam. Head cam. I think he's clear. He's clear. He's clear. He's clear. And looking at it there, it ain't 30 pounds. My misjudgment, gentlemen. Okay. One glove. If I can just keep him straightened out, I've got a chance. He's probably going to go nuts on the boat. And the other thing I normally do is forget to put that out of the way. 
I'm going to try and attempt this, people, just to let you have a look at this shark. And there is Mr. Shark, who is... <laughs> I'd say he's about 60, 70 pounds. This is a bit stupid, but listen, that's the teeth end. And I'm going to try and get him in and tag it. It's about 70, I guess, peeps. Right, let me bring this off. I'll get myself sorted out here. Ted, what the hell are you doing, man? Get away from it. Oh, he looks all right to me. That's pretty safe. Well, he's not. Trust me. That is not one safe shark. He's got a mouth. Holy sh! Look at the size of those teeth. Oh, I can't, I've got him in the boat, I can't get him out. I'm tangled. Oh, I can barely hold him. He wants to go there. Just see him under the surface swimming away. Probably going to come up, cut through the surface with his fin. Now he stayed just under the surface. So tell me, Ted, did you enjoy your first day's fishing? Well, I'm not sure if enjoy is the word, actually. I'm really not sure if I, I could say I enjoyed it. Uh, I felt a little bit queasy. I felt very queasy. And I, I saw the blue shark. Once I saw his jaws, I felt I had to change my underwear. Now you've got to be careful what you say, because I've just looked up here. There's a, there was a yachtsman coming. What, what do you actually think of them? Well, I can't really say, to be honest, because it has a lot of bad language in it. So, me and Ted here, we've had a great time, haven't we, Ted? Yeah, we've had a pretty good time, really. Why is it my lips move at the same time as Ted's? I don't know. Why do they do that? Are you a ventriloquist? Are you a ventriloquist? Are you a ventriloquist? Ventriloqu 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 no, I'm not, but I also got a kebab stick up your kaisha. Is that what makes me go like this? <laughs> That's how I work him, you see. He's my little friend. I just hope Mabel, Mabel, and Smith, Smith, don't get jealous. Who are they? What's more, if they call a whiting like me. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Who's that other bloke? It's my son, Michael. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to watch my chair outdoors. Hit the subscribe button. Bosh, bosh, bosh. We'll see you next time. I might even be on it. Cheerio. Cheerio. Oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a boat coming over here. Yeah, there's a lot of men with white with white coats with white coats on them. I think I think they want to dock next to me. I don't know why. I don't know why.